Hey guys, this is Rev again. I'm going to show you another quick tutorial dealing with radio messages and uh, going a little more dealing with triggers just to do another quick overview on that in case anyone has further questions on that. Uh, in this mission, uh, it's entitled Insurgents as you can see down here in the bottom left hand corner. Mission I created where initially the player uh, spawns here. It's another multiplayer mission. You basically spawn here. You're tasked with the target to fly out here to destroy a little transport group, a um, couple vehicles, couple tanks that are trying to make their way to this small, tiny little trigger. And actually, what I have set up here, uh, if the enemy ground vehicles make it all the way uh, up this road to this point, there's actually a little explosion that will take place. I'm still tweaking that to find out how big I want to make it. And there's actually a nuclear power plant right here. You don't actually see it, but you'll see it in the 3D world. Um, getting back to tutorial, sorry, I had to step away for a moment. Again, a little explosion takes place. And again, I'm still tweaking that, so I haven't got it to where I'm exactly satisfied with it just yet. The vehicles, as soon as the mission spawn, or as soon as, excuse me, as soon as the mission starts, the vehicles spawn. And they begin traveling down this road. The reason why there's such a huge separation between the vehicles and this third waypoint, which is labeled as target, is simple. The player, they may be fast at doing a ramp start, they may be slow. Uh, they may not f travel as fast in, along these routes. Uh, they may go full throttle the entire way, just don't know. Typically, and most times when I've replayed this, just testing out, looking for crashes, the player, by the time the player gets on station around here, and it's looking for targets. The vehicles are normally around this little uh, peninsula type uh, deal you can see here. Uh, ignore this guy out here. I typically spawn here to test out some of my triggers as I'm going up to this other mission. The player, again, when they spawn, all they know about is this mission here, these waypoints. Uh, this is hidden, as well as all of this is hidden. Um, by the way, if the vehicles make it in here, of course, the mission is over and the none of these options will actually spawn in for the player to even uh, participate in uh, and this is the mission that's going to be part of a mini campaign and we'll try to put together hopefully over the next couple of weeks and release it to the to the community um, if the insurgents win they push the american forces all the way back to batumi uh, <clears throat> okay next step after all these vehicles have been destroyed Again, it's not going to be too difficult, pretty easy for players to be able to get in, destroy them, whether it's single player or multiplayer. They start flying around waypoint four. And as you can see, this, uh, this trigger I've actually labeled as first message. Uh, and again, I highly recommend doing basically layman's terms or just making it as dumb or labeling everything as for the dumbest person possible. That way it makes it very easy to figure out what you're doing when you're looking inside your trigger menu, it's a lot easier to figure everything out. Um, taking a quick look at the triggers, this one is the once RTB. Basically, this is if all the attacking forces right here are dead. Again, I just label attacking force, attacking force one, attacking force two. I've named it RTB. That's just, again, just to make the naming very simple so I immediately know what's going on. Once I've, uh, sorry about that again, guys. i uh, still getting over my cold. Had to step away. Again, you have a lot of options on here on how the conditions can be met for the action to be take to take place. Once the all three of these are met, this message is sent. Right now, I have it selected as mission message to coalition. You can have it sent in the country to all whatever you want. I have it sent to coalition, blue coalition, and a message that I've typed in and it's going to display for 20 seconds before it automatically disappears. This is basically telling the player that hey you've killed these guys, good job, come on home. So they then fly out to waypoint four and at that point in time when they hit this, mi this message um, which is actually going to be, I have it labeled here as activate um, Al-Qaeda leader, sorry for the abbreviation, but it's you know, one of those necessary things. It basically gives them a radio message. Um, 
you know, just one of those little simple things. And this is one where the player actually has to respond. They have to actually accept the mission. And these are where the radio items come into place. The radio item you select, you can add or remove them. I'll talk about that in a moment. But once you add them in, you put the radio text, basically what you want the player to see in their radio menu. And then you give it a flag. Now there's some common confusion with the flags. The flag doesn't mean uh, flag one. What it means is flag one is true or flag one is on. You can name it or you could give it a number of 100. Just remember that's the number for the flag that is true in this case. And I'll show you a little bit later on. Ignore this one for now. We go down to our mission accept. And again, name it very simple. Mission decline, mission accept, flag one is true. Again, if they hit the in the in the radio menu, they hit accept mission, flag one becomes true. You then want to be actually remove those options as well. You don't want to do it in the exact same if you actually had the radio item remove in here, the player would never have a chance to actually select it. It would automatically just get removed. Because remember, the computer starts processing everything from top to bottom and the computer is moving at a whole lot faster rate than the player will ever see or be able to respond and since again since this is flag one is true and this is the condition flag one is true because it was actually selected in the uh, under here as the mission accept you remove the items and the JFAC is activated and there's a new message that pops up giving the UTM coordinates which is <coughs> roughly about here if I'm not mistaken um, I don't like giving the exact coordinates making it I think this makes it a little too easy uh, um, in this case it is just you know round about one the player has to search for the target I ignore this text this is just there to make sure it popped up when it was supposed to I was running an issue where some the messages were going to through too quickly um, but it got fixed, but ignore that. That'll be taken out before I release this mission to the community. Uh, decline mission. This is another option if they chose to decline. For whatever reason, maybe uh, he was a bad shot, wasted all his ordnance on these guys here. Shouldn't accept the mission to go on here. So it should decline it. So if he does, he, by pressing the decline, which is decline is labeled as flag 2, flag 2 now becomes true. Flag 1 stays false your flags default to a false state so by check, clicking on you know decline mission flag 2 now becomes true again you remove the radio items so you need to make sure that happens message coalition giving them some type of information then flag 3 is on again basically saying you know flag 3 is true and that actually comes across in here when it you know basically if if flag three is true, this message needs to be displayed to uh, the blue fo blue coalition. Again, it's best to suggest coalition blue force and display time. There's this trigger zone right here called threat aware. I just labeled threat here, but I've actually labeled threat aware here. And basically, if any one of the multiplayer pilots reaches this zone, then this message gets displayed. It's basically telling them that. You know, there's heavy AA SAM activity in the vicinity, you know, proceed with caution. Uh, I don't like just to send someone in blind. I like to give them a little some type of tidbit to go along with it. The next one right here, this, this trigger zone, is the leader position. And again, any one of the players, which right now, because of the issue with um, having planes in the same group with waypoints causes crashes, at least in this beta stage, you have to have them separate groups so it just means you have to actually add extra things versus just one group so keep that in mind you again select the correct you know trigger zone and this message to coalition basically saying that axman one which is uh, this jtac and i was corrected i know it's jtac now sorry back when i was in the air force it was jfac it's a little hard to get over but basically it's saying Axeman, this is, or excuse me, Hog 1, this is Axeman 1 over. Uh, we've got visual on the target. He's basically giving him approximate, uh, 
basically an approximate location in the camp where he's at. And the uh, actual JTAC will actually start um, targeting the person as well. But just in case, for whatever reason, if that's broken, something happens, the player still has an idea of where to look for the leader. Because in this one, in this whole area here, the whole point is just to kill this one simple guy. He's the leader. And that's just what the mission is. Uh, it's actually a secondary mission to this one. Um, and it's actually, again, the Al-Qaeda leader. And there's actually have a nice little backstory on this in the briefing page. Um, go ahead and pause the video if you want to read all this, but I'm going to move on pretty quickly. Uh, that's pretty much the sum of it. Uh, there's a lot more to the radio messages. The main thing, again, um, when you do radio messages, you radi add the item, the text you want displayed, and you give it a flag number. And that just means if they select this radio text or this radio item in the radio menu, it makes this flag, whatever this number is, equal true. Um, versus, and this one would of course be false because they selected the other one. You then want to make sure you remove those items. You know, for if it was just, you know, if maybe they just accepted it and there was nothing else to display, I would actually have a radio message remove and then just simply have it remove those items only. Uh, but in this one I had a little more extra stuff going on, so, but you also, again, make sure you remove them in both possible choices. As you can see, I have radio items being removed in both po both possible choices, and you need to make sure you type it in correctly in your add and a remove. If you misspell it, it's going to cause an error. But that's pretty much the basis of the radio items and going over triggers a little more. Um, there's a few more things I need to tweak with this one, but it'll be ready to go here pretty soon to the public just to give it a try and fly and have a good time. Uh, not sure what else you guys want me to go over. I will be going over creating custom groups using a template and then assigning a JFAC that way. Then I'll actually go into creating a custom mission from beginning to end. Um, so if there's a specific type of scenario you want to see, let me know. I'm putting together some stuff on paper and I'm actually going to go through it. And probably recording over two, vid two videos worth and show you beginning and end creating um, everything from assigning you know, ramp start locations to spawning in the right type of targets, giving them waypoints, giving them conditions as to when they should move, when they should stop, their rules of engagement, whole nine yards. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, otherwise, this one is good to go. Let me know if, uh, again, if you have anything else, and uh, 